Hi guys, welcome back to the Auction Modeler. After the catastrophe of issue 19, we now have issue 20 of the Spitfire. So with issue 20, we are doing uh, the pilot seat and the control panel. We're doing some electrics in this issue, um, the support for the, um, for the seat, actually attaching it all together just there. Um, the lighting board that we get, we're putting a few bits together, um, attaching everything there, we're checking the electrics on the lights to make sure they work, labelling up the cable and then we're putting everything together for the cockpit short of attaching the seat. So this one will be a much longer video than issue um, 19 was, if I'd have done 19 right. So let's get started on this one. So we've got, I've got all the parts still in the box that they came in. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about repainting the seat. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll see. Um, so I'm going to bring this in. So this has got just a bit of glue that I had left over from um, doing issue 19. So we're going to do this sprue just here. So this is the um, sprue that's got all the parts for the uh, seat mount on it. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to get a couple of these bits out as well because that's the part we need just now so move that over there right cut part e from frame 20.4 part e is this kind of triangular bit just in the middle there but be careful that you don't cut the little pins off of the side as well and um, so the, the flat end of the um the seat the flat end of the bottom, sorry, there should be two tiny little pegs. Move that back a little bit so you should be able to see it a bit better. There you go, those two pegs, make sure that you don't cut those off. And then we take this bit, so cut part E from the frame, taking care not to remove the pegs on the lower strut. Identify uh, a tab on 20.5, check how it fits into the slot at the top of part E. When you're happy with the fit, glue the parts together. So there you go in like that. So that's sitting well. So, when you're gluing these two together, make sure that where that little indent is in this part goes against the peg, because then that'll hold the angle right. There we go, so that's that bit all done and attached. I'll just show you just on this camera here, so you can see there, all nice and attached to that. Uh, at the angle there as well, so I'll just drop that down onto there. So next is um, cut part A from the frame. Um, now part A is this one, just here, where my finger is there. And check the fit on the side of the framework. Note that part A, when correctly positioned, has raised moulding on the side that faces the framework. Which should be that way. So. Same with this one, there is an elongated part on this. So just to give you an idea, just there, you see that elongated bit, that bit has to be left on. And then just hold this this way around. And then uh, when you're happy with the fit glue in place, so that bit goes right, so it goes on like that. So let me show you that way around. So if you can see on this camera here what I'm doing, that bottom peg on the seat part goes into the raised detail part there and the other peg goes into the hole right at the very top. So they'll line up and go in like that. So, if I get my tweezers, I got these new tweezers from Poundland and I have never in my life had a better pair of precision, precision tweezers for model building. These are brilliant, absolutely brilliant these. 
I don't like the the normal ones that I've been using that I got from Boise's with the um, wooden handles. They're good, but they're spring action, so they're always closed, and you have to squeeze the spring to open them. This is much better because you've got more. It feels like I've got more control over things with these ones. So that's that step done. Step three is uh, exactly the same with part B, which is the part that sits on the other side of the um, the seat bracket. I mean, you guys, if you've been watching my videos from like the beginning of the Bismarck build, you'll know that I don't. I'm not very good with using tweezers because they are very. I f sometimes I find them very cumbersome, and you can never get them in the right position, and. Uh, things like that whereas these are just brilliant absolutely brilliant because it means I can line everything up properly and still glue it in so when I've been using my massive sausage fingers to glue stuff together it's you know you're holding something like that and you're trying to get really small parts into to a bit and it's just it's a bit complicated and you, you struggle to get stuff in properly whereas that is these are helping a lot so one pound one pound and you get four different ones i've got three of them here but you get those three plus another one which i don't know where that one is i'll have to dig that one out um but yeah i'm so so chuffed with these bits they're they're absolutely brilliant right so that's stage three done stage four is take the pilot seat so obviously this comfortable looking piece of engineering here and take the support the back support which is this one and then uh, the three pegs on the back of the support fit into the sockets on the back of the seat as indicated when you're happy with the fit glue it into position that's fine see for bigger parts like these you don't really need um you don't really need anything like tweezers because it's quite easy enough to hold these bits until they've you know in the right position and the glue has set but for the smaller parts which obviously we've had a lot of on this build so far i would definitely recommend keeping a good pair even if it's a cheap pair of tweezers nearby so that's that one done now uh, step five, take the seat support framework assembly from step three. So that's this beautiful piece of uh, conjoined plastic here. And attach uh, the pegs on the top of parts A and B fit into the recesses. So those two pegs there and there, on this, tilt it down a bit more so you can see them. Those two pegs there and there fit into that hole there and that hole there. line that up to fit into there that's that that's in okay that looks good uh ensure that the recesses in the bottom part of 20.5 can be aligned in the holes in the seat glue pegs a and b in place so what it'll look like when it's all done is Make sure I'm getting this all lined up yet. So there's two little holes there and there for them to fit in. And then these two little holes here, it'll be the same on the other side of the seat as well, should line up perfectly with that hole just there. And then we just glue the two pegs at the top into position. So, that's that assembly glued into position there. Now, next couple of bits are on the other sprue. So, uh, stage six, cut the seat framework strut G from frame 20.6. So, G is this little one just here. So where you've got the one, the, the uh, part that's got parts for the um, control stock, this one at the far end here. So, 
Now this bit will go into the little hole in the uh, seat bracket there and then that little tiny hole just there as well. And the way around it goes is because you've got the part has got the cockpit green at one end and the silver at the other, the cockpit green end will go into the seat and the silver bit will go into that little hole just there. So eventually it will sit in there like that. So. Dab of glue on each of these pins. And then one in there, one in there, like that, just like that. So that's it for that side. Um, we're going to cut the strut and lever H from frame 20.6. The longer peg on, peg on part H fits into the ho uh, seat, the shorter peg fits into the hole in part A when you're happy glue in place. So that's this one just here. Let's make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Uh, part H, part H chip, so it's that one there. Exactly the same thing. Clip that side. Now there's a tiny little peg on the other side of part H on the flatter end, so make sure you don't cut that off either. Any problem with being right handed as well, you have to do everything with the one hand. So, here we go. Oh, the times building models, I wished I was ambidextrous. Okay, so exactly the same thing on this one. Big peg goes into that hole there, little peg goes into the tiny hole at the bottom just there, and then that will sit in like that. That will leave just a little bit of that lever just there pointing straight up and over. Uh, next, take the seat edging 20.7, identify the recess on the side of the seat where it fits. The tab in the base of the edging uh, fits into a hole in the base of the seat, fits in place with a little super glue. So, that's the seat edging just there. Now, there's been a lot of stuff on Facebook groups about this and how historically accurate it is. It fits in well there. Um, my opinion on it is, and my theory on it is, that even if it's, you know, I, I would assume that Hatchet have done, whoops, I would assume that Hatchet have done their research. The engine itself, the engine bay and, and the, the, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that's in there, is as accurate as I think they could possibly get. Um, the cockpit cables and wires and everything are as historical, historically accurate as they could possibly get. So my theory is there is a reason why this bit has been put in. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what it is. Um, if I do want to repaint the seat, I've got a lot of masking up to do before I do it. I'm probably just going to leave it now that I've glued these parts in. Um, just because I like the look of it in black. I think it looks good. So that's the um, seat construction there all done. So you've got the seat itself, you've got the seat edging, and then you've got the seat mount at the back there with the um, poles and, and levers and levers and everything there. So that's that bit all done, just out of camera. Next, part nine. Um, check your, uh, fit the circuit board on part 20.1 into the back of the control panel. So I'm just going to unravel the cable on this one. I'm really, 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 really hoping this works. So we've got the light, uh, the um, circuit board. So what we're going to need now, I'm just going to get the three parts that we didn't use in the last issue, which are these three just here. Plus, I'm going to get the two bags of screws as well, because I have a feeling we're going to be needing those shortly as well. So I'll just move this lot out of the way. Everything that I know I'm not going to need. So, that's that bit. So if we take... Stay there. So... So we need to take... 
circuit board and attach it in circuit board side up into this part here and then uh, you will need to carefully bend the cable so that it fits through the notch in the edge of part 19.4 fixed in place with two KB screws supplied with issue 19 so I'm thinking the black ones are the KB screws let me double check it yeah it must be yeah definitely right so Where'd I put the screwdriver? There it is. So, now I'm being very ginger with this because any of you that have followed me on the Bismarck build will know that issue 40 of the Bismarck, I really screwed up by trying to test the lighting before I had all the bits to test the lighting. Not doing that on the Spitfire. So, uh, next we take these two control windows there and there, and we just pop them together like that. So the dials and everything sit in there nicely like that, and then you've got the same there as well. Now we need the um, parts that we built with issue 19 and the uh, let's have a look. The assembly for issue 19 sandwiched the part of 19 1 between the assemblies from steps 9 and 10. Make sure that you have assemblies on the correct side of part 19.1 and the cable runs through the notch in the bottom of 19.4 which it does because I know I've done that um, fixed in place with three KB screws which are those ones that we've just attached so in this part that we did in the last issue you can see there there's a little ridge that will fit in there like that so that it's ever so slightly proud and once that's in I'm just going to turn this part over Make sure that's lined up properly, and then screw that one in. Screw that one in, and screw. I'm not over tightening these screws, I'm just going to the point where they feel tight enough. So that's what that will look like when that's all done. Now we've got the lighting test. Oh, oh. So, um, take the battery box and circuit board from issue 12, connect the cable to the socket on the circuit board marked LED. So you've got, you might not be able to read it on here, but you've got one at the top there which says motor oh you can read it actually one that says motor at the top there and then one that says led down there whoops down there and then the battery box goes in there so if we just connect up the led there we go that's in and then attach the battery box battery box in the off position there. Uh, when the battery box is switched on the instruments on the control panel will light up. After testing disconnect the cables, wrap the cable uh, with the label. So let me just check this. Oh, it's very, you might not be able to see it very well because I've got quite a lot of lighting in here but, oh you can, there you go. So not all of the lights are lit up. I don't know if that's just, oh they are. They are, it's just because it's very, um, I kind of cup it like that, you can see it a little bit better. But that looks good, liking it, liking it. So if we disconnect that, disconnect that, pop those over to the side. And then we've just got the label L1, so that'll be lights one. And we'll 
attach onto this cable here like that so that's that bit done that's stage 12 done now we've got to bring in all the cockpit parts so this is going to be another long video guys right so take the cockpit assembly from issue 18 which is this one that we've got just down here with all the pipes and cables and everything on i'm just going to open this packet of screws So, mm -hmm. there's another few screws in this one here as well. So, let's do this. Take the cockpit assembly from issue 18 and the control panel assembly from issue 12. From step 12, sorry. So, step 12, issue 18. Fit the control panel assembly at the front. I'm just going to keep these screws separate actually because I think there might be some slightly longer ones in here which were the same ones that we used to hold the back panel in um, so fit the control panel assembly at the front of the cockpit as shown so that the frame 19 one fits behind the two tabs so those two tabs there need to fit behind these two holes here so it'll eventually it'll sit like like that or so he says when you've got everything lined up, it should sit quite nicely in there. But it won't sit like that, so yes, got to be that way around. Brilliant. So, right, that's it. That's on. Uh, fit. I put those ones. Uh, right. Uh, with the screw holes on part 16 one fix in place with two km screws supplied with issue 19 so these are the km screws that were supplied with issue 19 so same as always i'm just tightening these screws up until i until i can just feel them bite and they're quite tight but not ridiculously over tightened then once i've put the other side in tighten that one fully Tighten that one fully, so that's the um, first part done. Uh, check the fit of the bulwark assembly from issue 18 against the starboard side of the cockpit as indicated by the arrows. The ends of the pipe fit into recesses in the struts on the bulwark assembly. Uh, the bulwark is not fixed in place at this stage. Okay. Right, so that will go, the bulwark will go into the gap just there, like that, and then I'll just show you on this camera here, so it'll fit like that, and then you've got your headrest just there as well. So, holding the bulwark from 18 in place, which we've got there, take the port side of the cockpit assembly from issue 15, which is this one here. Uh, check the fit on the port side of the cockpit, noting that the tabs with the screw holes on the framework from 15 wrap around the outside of the bulwark at each end of the cockpit. That will fit like that. Like that. Like that. Yep, like that. There we go. That's that. So holding that in place. With all the pieces correctly positioned, fix the port side of the cockpit in place with two KM screws supplied with issue uh, 19. So that's these ones just here. So the two of these smaller, shorter screws will go at the, um, the end of the control panel. Might get the screw in the right place. There we go. And then just the same with the other one at the bottom. There we go, so that's that one done. And then uh, turn the cockpit so you can access the other end, which is this end here. And fix in place with two KM screws, 1.6 by 5 mil, which are these slightly longer ones. One 
one in and grabbed, and then we'll do the same thing with this one at the bottom end there. So then I'll just tighten all these screws up. That's that one. That's that one. There we go. So that's that. And then uh, at the front end of the cockpit on the starboard side, fit the ends of the pipes into the hole in the bulwark. No, uh, below the control panel, no glue is needed. At the rear, fit the pipes into the recesses as shown. Glue the tips in place. So basically what we've got is the completed cockpit more or less in terms of structure and shape it's completed so we've got that here just so you guys can see it on this camera as well so a little bit on that side and a little bit on that side now there are some pipes that will need attaching so right down the one with the red tip there and the kind of copper pipe that runs up and round here will need to just fit into that hole down there and then at the back there's just a couple of pipes that will just need fitting into um, the relevant holes at the back so what I'll do I'll get those all glued into position so they'll all be glued in um, ready for when the build is completed but that is it really then for um, issue 20 so we've got the seat completed and done we've got the cockpit put together with the um, control board uh, control panel, all the pedals and everything, and then this will fit under here, like that, so I'm guessing that will fit in there like that, so just to give you an idea on um, how that will look when that's done, so yeah, it's looking good, looking, fan ah, looking fantastic actually now, so yeah, that's that, with issue... Uh, 21 we get the framework that the, uh, forms the floor of the cockpit together with other details for the cockpit so just a few bits there as well so yeah that's it that's issue 20 done um it's coming along um obviously we've got the front of the spitfire there then we've got the cockpit which will go i'm, I'm guessing somewhere kind of around about there just to give you an idea because it's not going to go but right up to there probably about there so yeah that that's looking good as well put those on me uh, on my windowsill so I know where they are so yeah that's issue uh, 20 done issue 21 will be up shortly and um, please remember to like share and subscribe to the auction modeler for more weekly model building geekiness and I will be back with issue tw uh, 21 of the Spitfire very soon so until then guys please remember happy modeling and stay safe